Be patient. Don't divorce don't them. them. And sisters, and don't, sisters don't ask for a divorce. For a divorce. Because, your, because children your children are going to end up without a father. And your children, and your children are going to be raised, raised up by a single, by a single parent. parent. My wife wants a divorce. I want to remain as I have children with her. Can you advise? Okay. My advice to the sisters in general, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, that my advice to you is that you should exert every effort to remain with the man that you bore your children with. The man who gave you those children, meaning after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed that for you, that man is the man that you should spend the rest of your life with. And the majority of men, the majority of men who are upon, and more so those who are upon Salafiyyah, are not transgressors or oppressors. It doesn't mean that they cannot occasionally do something wrong. They can. And some men can do wrong. But by and large, a man who's married a woman and he sleeps with her, and he, and he has children with her, by and large, he will have concern. So when something takes place, there's a good reason as Sheikh Muqbil, rahimahullah, as a side point, Sheikh Muqbil, he mentions there's a good reason in the Sharia why Allah did not put divorce into the hands of women. Because she will be divorcing her husband six or seven times a day, Sheikh Muqbil said. Why? Because women are very, you know, they're emotional creatures. They are emotional people. So sometimes, or a lot of their time, that their judgment is built upon emotion. Men, though can be emotional, their decisions are built upon rationale. So a man, when he marries a woman, he thinks about the future. He wants to know her past. And he thinks about where they're going to go. By in general, this is how men think. Because men want to protect their lineage. What they, you know, they, they want the woman that they marry. They, they want children. Men want that. Women want that too. But the fact is that if you divorce your husband and you have children, the chance or the probability of you finding another husband who is better than him and that he's going to look after your children that you bore with him becomes very remote. And women sometimes, and especially women who feel, especially in these societies that we live in, and they get influenced by their education and the, their culture and their cultivation at schools, they seem to think that once they enter into a marriage with a man and he's not really what they, what they expected because he's not rich enough and so on, or he's not fulfilling this romantic idea of what a husband should be, they start thinking that the grass on the other side is greener. Sisters, take it from me. The grass on the other side is not greener in 99.9% .9 of cases. You imagine it's greener because of the society and the influences around you. The grass is not greener on the other side. The next man you get may not be better. In most cases, he's no better than the one that you asked for a divorce from. And in most, and, and I'm speaking from nearly 30 years of listening to women who regret. Women who ask for a divorce, the husband divorces her, and she's left alone. Within a month, he gets another wife. If he's driven, and he's successful, and he has a good job, he's not going to find it hard to get another wife. Then the phone calls begin. Brother, I can't find a husband. And my ex-husband, he's gotten married. And I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know, can you speak? Now, what do you want me to say to him? What do you want me to say to him? To leave his other wife? You want to be a second wife? No, I don't want to be a second wife. So what do you want? I don't know, but I, I, I want him back. Too late, sister. My sisters, it is not to say that men don't have mistakes. I've mentioned that a man can oppress his wife. 
But a man does not enter into a marriage in most cases, in the vast majority of cases, and especially amongst the Salafis, he does not enter into a marriage to oppress. I mean, he's got to be a bit of a psychopath, right? To, why are you going to marry a woman just to beat her and oppress her? You need to be in, he needs to be in a mental institute or prison. Why would a Salafi man marry a woman, give her the mahar, speak to her father, you know, sit in the meetings, then marry her, to oppress her and beat her? That's not the intent. And you shouldn't oppress, and you shouldn't beat. And in most cases, it doesn't happen. But women get frustrated. He doesn't listen to me, he doesn't talk to me, he comes in late, oh, he goes to the gym. He only sees, you know, I only see him three, four hours a day, and then he's snoring away. Yes, it can happen, right? But you have to be patient, my sisters. You know, a relationship, a marriage is about commitment. It's not about, you know, I want to be living in that honeymoon period that you have in the first two weeks of your marriage for the rest of the 60 years. It's not going to happen. People get old, people decline, children come into, you know, you're too tired, relationships are difficult, sometimes they get strained, he loses his job. Right, he's busy at Durus, sometimes he'll forget, so he needs to be reminded, I want a divorce, I want a divorce, I don't care. You know, you get phone calls sometimes and a sister said, I asked him to divorce me, I said, why did you ask him to divorce you? I said, oh, I don't know, I just got emotional, I got asked him to divorce me. I said, okay, he'll take you back. Did you divorce me? Yeah, divorce me. He'll take you back. No, he's done it three times. Is there any way out? You know, what do you want me to say? There's no, there's no way out. He divorced you three times over three, four years. I said, who asked? Well, I asked, I kept getting angry because, you know, he'd come in late and I'd get really angry and I said, I don't know what you're doing and I want to divorce me. He said, all right then, if you really want it, because I'm getting fed up with you with all of this nagging that you do, I come in, I work all day, I pay the bills, I pay the rent, I put the food on the table, I go to the groceries, I do everything. And I come home and you talk to me like this just because I spent another two hours you know, maybe with a with, with brother or maybe with, you know, at a dars, and you're just, you just get angry with me every time, four, five, three, four, five times a week. Yeah, well, divorce me then. So I'll divorce you then. Divorce you, sir. Take me back, please. You sure? Yeah, you're not going to do it again? No, no, I, I don't know why, I don't know why I did it. Khalas, he takes it back. Then she does it again. Seven months later. Then she goes through the whole process again. And maybe they get someone to arbitrate and help them so they don't do it again. A year later she does it again. Khalas. I think he was angry, Ustad. Now you're looking, now you're grasping at straws. I think he was angry because he didn't look very happy. Well, of course he's not happy if he's divorcing you. So what are you going to do, my sisters? Divorces a lot of the time are initiated by women. I'm not saying that your husband is perfect. I'm saying that you husbands shouldn't just accept the fact that they want to divorce and you divorce them. Right? Because maybe they're mentally not right. Maybe, you know, they've got some, you know, monthly issues. So you have to be patient with them. Be patient. Don't divorce them. And sisters, don't ask for a divorce. Because your children are going to end up without a father. And your children are going to be raised up by a single parent. And prisons are filled with men who have been raised by a single parent. Prisons are filled with them. You have a much higher likelihood, multiple times more likely to end up in criminality on the streets and in prison if you are raised by a mother alone, especially if you're a boy, if you're a male. Males need men and male role models. Boys need fathers. If you are going to kick the father out of the house, my sister, then that child has got a difficult future. If there is no father, constantly, Present, even if it be in the background. He goes to work in the morning, the kids know he's coming back in the evening. And when you're, like my mom would say to us when we were kids, 
in the 1970s. They wait till your dad comes back. We're like, oh no. Because mum is mum. You sit down, you get up. He said, come down, your dinner's ready. So you, yeah, well, it's only mum. All right, then wait till your dad comes home. Like, oh no. And you start trembling. Because that's the male role model. That's the male. He offers authority and leadership in the home. Remove that, what do you have? You have a girl who's not raised by a man. There's no man there, so it's just mum. So mum raises the girl, she grows up, and you start looking for a husband. So the boy, the family that you're marrying, they're wondering, where's dad? Oh, well, dad left about 14 years ago, and I've had to raise her by myself. So the first thing that comes to your mind is, aha, she's had no, that girl has had no man in her life. Her, the leadership in her home has come from a woman. When she comes into my house, I'm going to marry her. And all of a sudden, the leadership changes from woman to man. And men lead completely differently to women. Anyone who's a father of children knows that men lead a house differently to women. Right? Go away for anyone who goes away for work or something and comes back three weeks later. And the mom's like, I'm so glad that you're back. SubhanAllah, I can't control these kids. You need to talk to him. You need to talk to Abdullah. You need to talk to Abdul Rahman. And you need to talk to Aisha. Because all of these three weeks they've disobeyed me. And dad just looks at them and they start trembling. Have you been disobeying your mother? Because the whole dynamic is different. You remove the man from the relationship, my sisters, because that's Western society. You want a strong, you want a strong family. You want a generational family. You want your progeny to go into your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. You want people that will come Yom Al Qiyamah and say, I am from your progeny. Seven generations down, hundreds of them upon Sunnah. Why? Because you laid the right foundation. It is not to say that every marriage will survive. I'm not saying that. Some marriages, by the Qadr of Allah, will not survive. By the decree of Allah as a test and a trial from Allah. But you do not be the cause of that. Don't be the cause of that. Don't be the one who initiates it. My sisters, be feminine. Brothers have to be masculine. Don't give up to women. Don't give on to them. Because that's a disease also. Because women don't respect a man who is weak. She might say to you, why don't you listen to me? As soon as you start listening to her, she says, why do you listen to me for? You're supposed to be in charge. Yeah, but you said, yeah, I know I said it, but you're not supposed to listen to it. And you think, well, what's wrong with this woman? Why? Because actually, the origin is you lead your homes. You should be running your homes as men. Don't listen to everything that she says because a lot of the things that she says have, have no relevance to establishing an Islamic home or establishing any home or a relationship. Where she's right and he agrees with that which is correct, then yes. A house is run by men. Remove the man from the equation, the house is finished. In most cases. Any sister who gets divorced by the decree of Allah, meaning that you've tried and you've tried and you've tried, maybe the man is a Qaburi Sufi or a Kharij or a Ikhwani or a Tablighi. So now you've tried, everyone's tried, the brothers have tried, you've dragged him to the mosque, you've let, and this man just won't leave that 56 inch plasma and watching movies every night. He doesn't pray or doesn't want to pray, he doesn't want to have the rules, and he's a bad influence upon the children, he's a gambler or whatever. Okay, you have a right. But as soon as that divorce goes through, don't hang around. Start, because you have children. Or even if you don't have children, this is not a society where people should be living alone. Get married. I didn't say it's easy. And it shouldn't be easy anyway. Marriage shouldn't be an easy process like today. Well, I got divorced. Tomorrow morning I'm getting married. Okay, some men actually can do that. But it's not the norm. Women certainly can't because they have to go through an idda period. Right, so what do you do? You make sure that you put every effort, my sisters... Because a woman can become complacent in marriage. 
A year goes by, two years go by, seven years go by, 10 years go by, she's 32, 33, 34, 35, unmarried. It's not a good place to be in. Get married. Men need to get married. I don't say just pick up any person, sisters or brothers, work hard, harder than what you work for for your GCSEs and A-levels and degrees. Marriage is more important. Especially in these societies. We need children in this ummah who are upon sunnah and salafiyah. It doesn't matter if you're a second wife, third wife, fourth wife. We don't believe in fifths. One, two, three, four doesn't matter as long as the man is good. As long as the man is good. It doesn't matter if he's older than you. It doesn't matter if he's slightly younger than you either. As long as he's a good man and he works. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that the best food that a man eats is the food that he earns with his own hands. And Dawood Alayhi Salam used to eat from the food that he earned with his own hands. It's not about how much that you're bringing in, but you are working hard. You're industrious. You're not lazy. You fill your day with things to do with your wife, with your kids. A time for them, a time for durus, a time for real hard industrious work. Go out there and get a job. I don't care if you're cleaning cars and doing, working in a car wash. It doesn't matter. It's honest work. A car comes in, you wash his car, he gives you four pounds. Alhamdulillah. Right? Wash 15 of them a day, 20 of them a day, 100 of them a day. It's a good job. Is it hard? Of course it's hard. You come home and make sure that she's not a woman who nags you. You come home and she starts arguing. Say, listen, I didn't come home to hear that. I've washed 150 cars today. I don't need a headache from you. Right? You should have cooked. You should have cleaned. The children should be happy. Right? And while you're there, I need a head massage. That's the woman. I do my job, you do your job. Right? I bring the food, you cook the food. I pay the bills, I pay the rent. And that's what a man should do. You want kuwa in your house? You want strength in your house? Then you provide for that house. You provide for those children. Not on her basis, on your basis. You decide how much you're going to spend on gro groceries. You can... You can have that discussion with her, but it's your money that's paying for it. You tell her, what do you need? She tells you, this is what I need. You go and get what you think you need from that list. You put it on the table, you tell her, this is yours. There's the fridge, there's the larder. You know where they are? We put them there. Go and put it in there now. All right? Let's get cooking. Let's get cleaning. Where's the kids? Let's sit down and do some Quran. This is how a Salafi home should be. You can laugh with her, you can smile with her, you can have a joke with her. Massage your husband's shoulders. Yes, you should. Yes, you should do it. Or what about my massage? You massage his shoulders. You serve your husband. Because he is your protection. He is the one who gives you honor. He is the one who puts food on the table. He is the one who pays the rent. And wallahi, if you are good to him, inshallah, if he's a, if he's a decent man, he will, he will put you and turn you into a princess. He will treat you with honor. And he will love you. And he will die to see you protected, my sister. He will die. People will come into the house and he will die before they come to you. They will have to reach you over his dead body. That's a man. Right? So don't take him lightly like he's nothing to you. That like he's just a piece of trash. As soon as he comes into the house, where you been? What time do you call this? Leave the man alone. He will honor you and he will protect you and he will provide for you and he will love you and he will care for you and the children. But don't dishonor him and don't disrespect him. 
That is the woman. That is the traditional Muslim woman. And that is the traditional woman in all societies. Since the beginning of mankind. That was Hawa with Adam. That was Khadija with Rasulullah. That was the wife of wives of the Anbiya with their prophets. And I'm not just saying within Islam, within all societies, this is how it has been. What, something changed in 2004? With this radical feminism? My brothers and sisters, men need to be men. Women need to be respected and honored. So we don't treat them like dirt as if they're nothing. As the Prophet said, they're the twins of the men. The women are the twins of men. So we know that. And that's why we treat them with honor and respect. But the roles are defined, shar'an, in the sharia, the roles are defined. So be good to them, yes. But be men. And women, show your femininity. Show that you are a woman. That the Prophet said, curse upon the man who behaves with the traits of femininity and curse upon the woman who behaves with the traits of masculinity curse of Allah is upon them women behave like women you know what it means to be a woman so just behave like that it is not something that you need to learn it is something that you're born with for men it's different because men go through a hard you know period of life where they learn the hard way how to be a man because men aren't very merciful to each other that's why all the kids at school are fighting. Girls hardly ever come home and say, oh, I've got a black eye and I've got a back and I've just been beaten up. And it doesn't happen to girls. But it's probably happened to every single one of the blokes sitting here today. You've gotten into a fight at school. Because those are the rites of passage of men. And that is something that we go through. Challenges and wrestling and fighting and so on. To reach where we reach. And some excel others, but it doesn't mean that in the home that you can't be men, protectors, providers, nurturers, and so on. Barakallahu feekum.